Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Sonata Software Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Dheer, CEO and Managing Director from Sonata Software Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, moderator. A very warm welcome to, to this conference. Uh, we will discuss Sonata's strategy, progress we have made in the recent quarters, and the financial results for the quarter Q4 and the fiscal year FI24, which ended March 31st, 2024. I thank you all for joining us today. Appreciate your valuable time and support. It is my pleasure to share the progress that we have made or continue to make with respect to our vision and growth trajectory for Sonata. Despite the macroeconomic challenges, geopolitical issues, and slowdown of tech spending across geos in, in, and in a couple of our verticals. Let me start by reiterating our long-term strategic goals. As you are aware, our objective is to be one of the fastest growing modernization engineering company with a goal to achieve a run rate of half a billion for the international business by end of FI26 at an EBITDA of low 20s. From a growth point of view, we outlined a few critical bets. We wanted to win multiple large deals in a year, over delivering on our M&As, to diversify our client base and successfully integrating these uh, properties. And third, win new logos that can scale Sonata to be the next 10 million, 25 million, 50 million dollar clients for Sonata as we move forward. And we want to achieve these goals in four verticals, which is healthcare life sciences, banking financial services, and insurance, retail and manufacturing, and technology media and uh, telecom. With investments in healthcare life sciences and BFSI uh, significantly more than the other verticals so that we can scale these verticals rapidly. And we wanted to modernize our clients' tech estate using our differentiated offerings lightning tools, IPs, and other offerings that Sonata has. We are optimistic about our long-term vision, despite current macroeconomic environment. With that, let me take up the performance for over for Q4. As mentioned in the previous call, we had anticipated seasonal softness in the momentum for Quant and Sittle during, uh, after a strong Q3. In addition, we had postponement in large deals which were expected to be closed in Q4. Uh, we have seen longer cycles to close large deals, and it may continue for another one or two quarters. The seasonal factors coupled with delays in the large deals, including holding costs for, of people for the large deals, impacted us during the quarter. As a result, we had a quarter where we saw sequential de decline in our revenue and uh, fat quarter on quarter. Let me provide some additional details uh, for this decline. During the quarter, we stayed invested in a large deal for a healthcare client. The client decided to delay the decision for the deal due to their organization changes and leadership changes. We were impacted both for the revenue and in the quarter investments for this large deal. We plan to redeploy these investments over the next one or two quarters as we close other deals that are in the pipeline. From a sector point of view, BFSI and retail sectors will continue to remain flat to moderate growth during the, due to headwinds in the sector. During the quarter, we witnessed and continue to witness green shoots and high tech and followed by healthcare business. In terms of numbers, the key outcomes for quarter ending uh, Q4 FI24, the international services business de-grew by 2.4% sequentially. Uh, it grew by 24.1% YNY. In constant currency terms, we have witnessed 2.2% sequential decline, but a 24.3% YNY growth. We had a very strong order booking in the quarter, despite the delay in the large deal. We, our book to bill is 1.22 for the international business. Our large deal pipeline is 34% up quarter on quarter. Our utilization improved by 1.6% in the quarter. We have now more than 3 million clients, 16 clients, in the more than 3 million category with an annual revenue rate and rate of Sonata. Last year, same time, this number was 12. So we added about four clients which exceeded the run rate of 3 million in the year. We also now have 11 clients with whom we do more than 5 million revenue annually. 
The overall attrition for the quarter was 14%. In Citil, uh, the domestic business, our gross contribution to the domestic business grew 11% YNY. Having spoken about Q4, despite the degrowth in Q4, FI24 was still a very strong year for us. We delivered 34.3% revenue Y on Y. Reflecting back on our FI24 performance, we are proud to share that we made significant strides during the year in the, in the past of our long-term goal. Let me summarize some of those achievements that we made as a team in FI24. Number one, the large wheel pipeline witnessed a 3.2 times jump in the, in the, uh, during the course of last year, and we closed in during the year 14 large deals. We won 45 new logos. Seven of the 45 logos were Fortune 500 customers. We made two new big bets in the year, GenAI and Microsoft Fabric, and both of them are on a path to scale Sonata. Our healthcare licenses business grew from 11% to 12% of our revenue in the course of the year. Our banking financial services business grew from 8% to 17% of our revenue in the course of the year. Our cloud and data revenue contribution increased from 49% to 59%, a 10% year-on-year improvement. Acquisitions in Quant and Encore both overperformed and fully got integrated into Sonata's way of working. During the year, we expanded our services in Mexico, Poland, Egypt, and Malaysia. A staggering four new geographies got added to really expand our global reach improving our responsiveness to our clients from a global footprint perspective. We consolidated our subsidiaries of GBW, Encore, and Scalable under one Sonata uh, company. We received several awards and recognitions from analysts, partners, in it, and, uh, and industry, including Microsoft Inner Circle Partner, Most Preferred Workplace 2324 in IT-ITS, Best Governed Company at the 23rd ICSI National Awards for Excellence in Corporate Governance, and EcoVadis ESG rating. We launched Sonata University in the year, and in the most recent quarter, Sonata was also adjudged the fastest growing IT service provider as per the as per HFS data viewpoint of 2023 report. Having given you an update on FI24, let me also provide you an update on the large deals for the most recent quarter. We continue our trend to close large deals. In the course of the most recent quarter, we were proud to announce we closed another large deal for a banking client. Uh, we won this deal with the largest banking firm in the, one of the largest banking firms in the U.S. for building um, a customer 360 across all LOBs of our client. This will help our client to consolidate, aggregate, and create a common customer 360 platform that will serve across their multiple LOBs. This is a, this bank is a top 10. Uh, asset under management bank for, for the United States. Our large deal pipeline looks healthy, and our data and cloud pipeline looks healthy as well at about 40% of our total pipeline. We continue to see a significant number of large deals in our harvest and invest verticals. Let me give you a flavor of that. Our biggest pursuit right now is with one of the largest telecom companies in Europe. Our biggest pursuit in HLS Healthcare Life Sciences is for a private healthcare org based out of London. Our biggest pursuit in retail manufacturing is for an Australian heavy equipment supplier. Our biggest pursuit in BSSI is for a Fortune 200 company in US. We are very excited about the momentum that our teams have created in creating this large funnel of large programs for the company. New logo wins. During the quarter, we, we added marquee logos that included a Fortune 22 healthcare client, a Fortune 150 client, and a Fortune 500 bank. Update on AI and our big bets in AI and fabric. On AI, we have over 65 million pipeline across 90 plus clients and prospects. We expect 20% of our revenue to come from AI services in three years time. We had another key win in the quarter on Gen AI. As part of the program, we're implementing modern engineering enabled by Gen AI, improving clinical trials productivity and quality, leveraging Gen AI, and building governance framework for the clients for Gen AI. This is a multi-year Gen AI program. Our teams are building solutions using Microsoft Fabric as infrastructure for AI in close collaboration with Microsoft. We are proud that we featured as a launch partner for Microsoft Fabric 
the data analytics platform for the era of AI. Our, our team of over 300 data engineers are enabling our clients to leverage this new end-to-end -end analytics SaaS platform for our clients. We continue to witness significant pipeline built for Fabric since its launch about three quarters back, and our pipeline is about 42 million now across 75 plus clients. Within Fabric, we are happy to uh, report another win that we had for a high-tech client. We won a deal to implement Fabric for a SaaS enterprise. We are creating and configuring Fabric environment for the client, which will enable them to create advanced automated reporting and visualization for customer proprietary products. Sonata Harmony.ai enterprise platform listed on Azure and AWS Marketplace. We announced the integration of Amazon Bedrock and related services to Sonata Harmony.ai. For Citil, we continue to scale our business, India business, with a sharp focus on annuity business. We are proud to share our outstanding achievements and awards for the quarter. Our CHRO won India's greatest CHRO award for 23-24 at a recently concluded 22nd Asian Business and Social Forum. Our company secretary and head of legal won the prestigious Governance, Governance Professional of the Year Award at the 23rd ICSI National Award for Excellence in Corporate Governance. With that, let me provide a brief update on talent. With the objective of making Sonata Gen AI company, Gen AI certifications were launched for, and more than 50% of Sonatians are now level 1 certified. And we are well on our path towards level 2 and level 3 certifications. We made significant strides in furthering our DNI charter under the able guidance of the DNI Council that we formed last year. The SWAN group, which is an acronym for Sonata Women Advocacy Network, has now gone global with chapters being opened in every continent where Sonata is operating. We continue to onboard young talent from campus with over 80% of the talent being women engineers in the most recent uh, freshers batch. In summary, we continue to remain confident about our medium and long-term growth prospects. In the next one or two quarters, we expect to redeploy the investments we made in the last quarter for the large deal and redeploy those people as we win new contracts. However, our large deal pipeline, our investments with partners, AI, fabric, strategic bits that give us a lot of confidence for our continued momentum. We had a blip but we are very optimistic about the future. Team Sonata remains committed to judiciously accelerate the growth curve and build scale, scale in terms of large deals, clients, markets, partnerships, and talent. Thank you. With that, let me turn to Jagan for his comments on our financial performance. Jagan? Yeah. Thank you, Samir. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, all. Uh, we are giving a, a financial update to you for this uh, quarter four of 2024. Uh, in this international business, as Samir mentioned, uh, we had a year-on-year, -year, uh, financial year 23 to financial year 24, year-on-year -year growth of 34.3 percentage, although the quarterly uh, growth has been a negative of uh, 2.4 percentage. On a constant currency basis, we declined by about 2.2 percentage. Uh, the revenue in uh, revenue in INR actually grew by 2.6 percentage for the year. It was 39.5 percentage. The important other uh, metrics in the international business is our utilization went, uh, was around 87.4 percentage. We have added 18 new customers. The top 10 clients uh, in Q4 contributed 52 percentage, and Q3 it was uh, actually 53.6 percentage. The number of clients more than 3 million in Q4 is 16 customers, uh, just some one uh, less than the Q3. The TMT business contributed 36% of revenue, retail manufacturing is 35, and HLS is 12%, and BFSI, BFS is 14%, and emerging has been 4% in Q4. In, the, in terms of our offerings, data has been 22%, Dynamics is 24.4%, and Cloud is 36%. And in, in the order booking, we have, as mentioned by Samir, a strong order book in this market. We had a book to bill of 1.22x uh, in the international business. The DSO was uh, 45 days with a strong collection of uh, more than $80.5 million. The headcount has, uh, has been 6,416 for this in Q4, uh, net of attrition, uh, in the net of attrition for the company. The, importantly, in terms of profitability, the consolidated PAT uh, is for the quarter has been 110.4 crore. 
from uh, 128.4 crores in Q3. The international EBITDA before forex and uh, other income has been 17.3 percentage. This is mainly because of drop in uh, revenue and profitability. This majorly contributed by, as Samir mentioned, uh, the large deals, the delay in closing the large deal. Uh, that was a major uh, impact for us in this quarter. The the other consolidated EPS for the quarter has been uh, has been uh, uh, rupees four compared to, uh, this is after the bonus issue adjustment of uh, one is to one. Quarter three, it was 4.6 uh, rupees uh, here. The, uh, the, the, the uh, year on uh, the console level, ROC is to that 25.4 percentage. Uh, Q3 was 31.4 percent and uh, ROENW stood at 31.4 percent still best in the industry. The domestic business gross contribution uh, Domestic business uh, gross contribution has been uh, at 64.8 crores. This uh, year-on-year growth of 18.6 percentage for us. For the whole year, they have made a very good GC of 260.4 crores. The domestic PAT for the quarter degrew 5.9 percent, but the year-on-year there has been strong growth of 15.7 percentage. The we have declared a dividend of 4 rupees 40 paisa as a final dividend apart from the interim dividend what we have given earlier. The other metrics and uh, are given in this my presentation and this will be uploaded in your website. We are now, we can take your questions and uh, uh, whatever that comes in. Thanks for this opportunity, Samir. Thanks, uh, thank you. Hand over back for the questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take a first question from the line of Bedik Sarkar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Samir, hi, good evening. Uh, congrats on our event so here overall. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, given your expected deal softness to continue for the next two more quarters, uh, how are you imagining just 225 to pan out? Uh, is it is it going to remain flattish or will you only have clarity by the end of Q2, Q3? Uh, do we have enough levers to accelerate? Uh, and, and also the specific weakness, which is related to the large $160 million deal that we won a few years back. Uh, if, if you just, you know, help us imagine 25 better. Yeah, sure, Radhik. Uh, thanks. Um, I think the, the overall uh, market is changing quite rapidly, Radhik, uh, uh, right now. And uh, our large deal pipeline still continues to be robust. Uh, so we believe that uh, as the time progresses, we'll continue to close. Of course, there are decision delays. Uh, deals that were taking uh, three to six months to close are now taking six months to even a year to close. So the, the cycle has just gone longer uh, in the market. Um, having said that, uh, I think uh, we think uh, we will grow in the next one or two quarters uh, flat to slightly modestly up. Uh, it won't be in the earlier zone that you're thinking about. That's where our current expectation is, but things are changing uh, literally uh, by the month right now. So I don't know whether we can give you a guidance for the whole year. Uh, will still be a growth year, and I, I believe we'll be growing ahead of the industry. Industry is forecasting about 5 to 6 percent. We believe we'll grow higher than that. Uh, but how much higher we'll be able to go than that, uh, I think we cannot answer that question. We'll, of course, keep you guys posted as the year progresses. Um, but we'll be definitely be um, uh, significant level of the industry for sure. But how much, we don't know. Uh, the next two quarters are interesting for us because we made investment in this large deal in the last quarter. Uh, so we have, as we close more more business, we have to redeploy the talent. That the talent is largely on-site that we hired. It was a very senior talent we hired uh, ahead of time. So we just redeploy the talent and uh, put our uh, our profitability up and uh, put, put the growth back in, in the current quarter. That's really the focus for the next one or two quarters right now. So, sure. Uh, what's the status on your large clients with high tech? Has that bottomed out? Uh, and do we have disclosures of change in the last fiscal? 
Uh, could you please perhaps call out uh, the degrowth that we've seen in your uh, number one client in IT services alone? So I think that's that's a good news. The, the largest client, the high tech client, is back on growth. If you recall, last quarter we uh, we shared with you guys that we are seeing green shoots of growth, and I think those green shoots of growth have become a mini plant. Um, and I think that's a positive side because we continue to to uh, to scale back uh, that account, and I think our scale. Uh, in the coming quarters, we'll go back to our original run rate, and uh, in the course of the year, we'll probably go back to our, our highest ever run rate uh, in the course of the year is our expectation right now. So we really continue to make good progress on that client uh, specifically, uh, Baidik. Baidik, uh, just to add a point, yeah. Baidik, just to add a point, the revenue growth uh, in the largest customer is strong, and we have a lot of opportunity to come. But uh, that comes with a uh, different mix uh, than last time. It's going to be in a different geos also. So that's a change in the mix that we are seeing here, but plenty of opportunity. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jagan. So, some should you imagine margins? You know, the talent that we've onboarded last quarter, is that fungible? And, or, or would you reckon margins will be under pressure for a few more quarters? How are you thinking of margins? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, the margins uh, will really be a function of how quickly we can redeploy these uh, people that we have uh, invested in for the large deal. Uh, they are fungible uh, talent, Tabadix. It's not like it's un not fungible. Um, and uh, the the margin uptake will really see, we expect between a, a quarter or two, uh, two, two being out of most limit from now uh, to put that back on track. That's our current expectation. It could be sooner, but that's our current expectation range, uh, Baidik. Okay, and just to... Uh, just from a question, the domestic business Q4 has historically uh, seen growth sequentially for the last few years, right? Uh, could could you perhaps call up what exactly happened here? Uh, was that a fall in our base of existing volumes or was this a repricing of existing clients? Uh, if you could please call that out. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start and maybe Sujit if he's on the call, he can build on this. Um, I, I think the, uh, the our Q3, uh, uh, where the, the October December quarter traditionally has been the strongest quarter in the year because at the time the annual contract had closed. Uh, so if you look at the past several years, our our, uh, um, our uh, beat quarter, the super beat quarter, is the Q3 quarter, and because the beat is so significant at Q4, no matter what happens, is a is a decline quarter. It has been the trend uh, for for last several years, and this year has been no exception. Uh, that Q3 was such a big beat uh, that Q4 uh, was a slow quarter for us. And it's a seasonal variation. We're not concerned about it, but it is. It was expected. If you recall our, our guidance when we when we spoke in the last quarter's call, we did say uh, both uh, uh, both Quant and uh, Citil will have some seasonality factored in into the quarter. So that's exactly how it panned out. Yeah, but however, GC has been having a strong year-on-year -year growth. Uh, by the we have got a gross contribution level year-on-year. -year, the growth has been very strong. We have always maintained that please track the year-on-year -year growth and please track the yearly growth. Uh, we are uh, you know, very confident of meeting that. Uh, this uh, Q3 versus Q2, Q4 versus Q1, this seasonal uh, variation will be there for different quarters. So I'll, I'll, I'll close with a bookkeeping question. We've had a few acquisitions related to costs in FY24. Uh, mainly on the financial front, uh, how should this pan out in the coming year? I mean, if, if possible, if we just call out the amortization, depreciation, and finance costs that you expect uh, on a quarterly basis. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. The finance costs in the quarterly basis, right? As mentioned earlier, the we have mentioned. I will. We will be uh, you know, uploading uh, the uh, the uh, presentation also, which was giving the breakup of amortization and interest on acquisition loan as well as unwinding of interest on the deferred payout, the unwinding of interest on deferred payout will come down after the payout happens in this quarter. This quarter, during the course of this quarter, the payments will happen. So from Q2, the, the unwinding of interest will come down, amount will come down. However, uh, uh, we have the earn out payout happen and our RBA issue is still uh, working to progress. So the additional borrow, borrowing cost will also will be there. So that may continue for another uh, couple of quarters. So, so net net, there is no change uh, downwards. Is, is that the takeaway, Jaren? Net net. Net net, it, 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 you may not see a big difference in the cost in the immediate uh, immediate quarters because of the uh, we are not able to uh, close the loan uh, because of RBI issues. That's an operational issue. We are in the process of that closing that. 
once that happens, after a couple of quarters, we expect it to be closed, so that cost may come down. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We'll take the next question from the line of Abhishek Shindarkar from Incorrect Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats for the full year. Uh, my question is, um, you know, regarding the quarter, um, when you had a sense uh, about, uh, you know, the miss on, uh, you know, the quarter, uh, so it, was it towards the end or, uh, you know, you were anticipating the ramp would happen and then it didn't happen? So first, any color on that and I have a follow-up. Yeah, Abhishek, hi. So uh, we had ramped up literally from uh, January onwards. There was a verbal agreement with the customer to move forward, uh, but we got to know that the deal is not happening towards the uh, mid-March time frame. Almost mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Got it. And, uh, um, you know, should we, um, um, you know, what I'm trying to understand here is that if I look at the standalone business that's down 4% revenue, um, uh, you know, the reason I'm asking this is, you know, the last quarter, uh, we revalued, uh, you know, the payments towards these acquisitions. Uh, so what I'm trying to understand is this growth or this speed was a function of, uh, you know, those two acquisitions and thereby with the change, would there be any change in the fair value assumption that which uh, last quarter? No. No, man. That is not that a, a substitute. Whatever acquisition company's growth has been estimated based on whatever we had the information on December closing, that remains the same because we also mentioned that for particularly Quant, which is the largest acquisition, that there is a season and impact for them in the January-March quarter. So, they are expected to bounce back, uh, uh, you know, totally from uh, from the April, June, and then uh, July to September quarter. They are uh, supposed to recover back and then uh, cover the whatever is the shortfall that happened during this time. So that's a the, so there is no change in the fair valuation of whatever we have done. Uh, got it. Thank you for taking my questions. I'll follow back in the queue, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants to press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mayank Babla from Inam AMC. Please go ahead. Hey, am I I'm audible? sorry. Uh, no. Can you use your handset mode, please? Is it better now? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so just to reconfirm uh, directionally for FY25, you mentioned that uh, in the first half we will be flat to positive and for the full year um, we will be higher than the industry uh, growth rate of uh, 5 to 6 percent. Am I right? Yeah, we will be higher than the industry for sure in the full year, but first half will be uh, flat to marginally up. Sure, and then you see the quarter on quarter, sequentially you see improvement from uh, Q3 onwards. Is that, am I right? It's hard to put a number, uh, Mayank. Uh, it could be in Q2 also, but uh, yeah, it will be uh, Q1 will be flat to slightly up, and we'll we'll see how the how Q1 pans out, and then we'll give you an update in July timeframe when we talk again for Q2. Right now, it's very hard to predict, but we we feel confident for the whole year will be ahead of the industry for sure. That that confidence we have. Sure. And uh, apart from the impact in the healthcare segment, uh, was there any uh, blip or one-off in any other uh, verticals? No, I think the healthcare segment had uh, uh, the the healthcare. By the way, the overall healthcare segment has done well. Just to put this in perspective, the overall healthcare se sector still grew, uh, but this deal also happened to be in the healthcare segment, which got delayed um, and uh, had a full quarter impact for us. Um, uh, but that's the only sector that we saw the deal delay of that size that impacted us in the quarter. Otherwise, I gave the commentary earlier, we continue seeing uh, good momentum in our high-tech uh, domain as well as healthcare domain and uh, uh, flattish to uh, slightly moderate growth in uh, retail and uh, uh, banking domains. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. I will come back in queue. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. 
Participants are requested to press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Deepesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just want one clarification about the large deal delay which we indicated in healthcare. Uh, whether that uh, deal is now cancelled kind of thing or you it is getting delayed and maybe in next two quarters you expect it to get closed. Uh, second related question, if I look your headcount and utilization, now your headcount has declined quarter on quarter, utilization has jumped up. And we are referring to delay deal closer, one of the reasons why revenue weakness was there. So if you can help us reconcile some of it, because utilization jump is far, and you indicated mid-March is where we get some clarity about some delay. So if you can help me understand about optimal utilization, which we generally plan. Yeah, the sir, I think uh, to your first question, the, the deal is still active, um, and it might uh, it might kick up uh, any time, uh, hopefully in this quarter or the next quarter. So we're still in pursuit uh, of that deal. Uh, now, as far as the the headcount uh, discussion, the, this deal had a significant on-site presence. Uh, so while the overall utilization percentage has improved for the company because we uh, uh, we did not need that many people in offshore. Uh, the on-site headcount was expected to be higher. So it impacted us from a cost perspective more than it impacted us from a utilization perspective. Okay. Yeah, and we are also being uh, uh, very, very uh, optim managing it optimally now, uh, moderating it between the on-site uh, increase and the offshore uh, headcount addition. Uh, because the market, uh, because of the uncertainties in the deal closure in the market, we will be, uh, in we will be balancing this uh, uh, for some time, but uh, no, that's the situation as it is. And just on the last part, these on-site resources, it is on subcontractor kind of thing, or we hired uh, employees there? Yeah, this is both a uh, mix of uh, both uh, uh, there, yeah. Because uh, there are, uh, there is uh, some amount of uh, hiring, some amount of contractors, both are there. It's not that if contractor, we would have confidently so that we may not have been talking about the redeployment. There are own our employee guys are also there. Understand. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Mihir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand this deal. Has it got uh, completely cancelled or has it got delayed by a couple of quarters? Uh, just a clarification around that. Uh, yeah, Mayor, like I said earlier to the patient's question, the deal has been delayed at this point in time. It, we are still pretty much in active pursuit of uh, getting the deal closed out. Uh, it's just a delay uh, given the, like I said, the off changes that customer had to go through. So he's waiting for the new management team to settle down, and then uh, the, the deal is very much active. There is still in con continuous dialogue with us. Sure, sure. So do you expect the deal to change in its own original structure? I mean, the kind of uh, the work that was given to you, uh, can it get curtailed down? Uh, any indication around that? No, we don't expect the deal's value to change. The timing of the deal is a uh, little bit of up in the question right now, but we do expect uh, it's very much a still an active deal. The deal value will not change substantially. Okay, so is it like driven only by the organizational restructuring or let's say the plant itself has entered into weakness uh, which has resulted to deal getting deferred? No, they, they had a change of leadership, so the, the new leader wanted to come and reassess the, all the programs and then uh, evaluate where, where they want to spend. It's really an organization leadership issue. Okay, sure. Uh, my second question was on the margin work. You know, the margin has come down uh, this quarter, I mean, quite substantially. So you can just provide a walk around that, you know, what part of that was contributed by this particular deal getting delayed. So it will be helpful. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, uh, definitely we have beefed up the on-site uh, employees for the deal. That had definite impact was there. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, be able to share the details uh, into the numbers now. Uh, the, but definitely, in fact, that was one of the major impact for us. The second layer also, the other deals uh, which has led to the large deal, uh, led to the revenue uh, not growing. So that was actually uh, also the reason for the margin impact. The revenue and the cost, the margin were related. We also continued our investment, as mentioned by Samir. We are very, very optimistic on the medium term. So we continue our investment in uh, AA and uh, Microsoft Fabric 
so that investment uh, will uh, also has an impact because we are not uh, we are not scaled down the in, the investment at present because we see a lot of opportunities in this too. Sure, sure, sure. Because you know the decline was 300 basis points, so it was quite substantial. So just wanted to check, you know, how to understand the margin uh, difference which has come in this quarter. It was one thing. Sure. And just uh, lastly, I mean, you know, these three components of the acquisition cost, interest, depreciation, finance cost. If you can break down, you know, what was the number each of these three numbers in FR24, and how would they change uh, going ahead in FR25 and FR26? So that will be helpful. Yeah, definitely. We have given the breakup in uh, one of the presentation which we will upload in the website soon. You can share, see the details of the breakup. But what is happening is that, as I mentioned, amortization of intangibles are not going to come down. Uh, it's uh, just a factor of the uh, of amortization over a period of time. The interest on uh, acquisition loan. Uh, there can be a short term uh, uh, short term up, upside in the interest cost because of our. Uh, uh, we are still working on uh, on the RBI issue to close for remittance of money. Then we have a net positive cash, but uh, we are not able to, uh, because of that uh, RBI issue, we are not able to remit the money. Hence, uh, interest costs will continue for some time. The unwinding of uh, interest on deferred consideration will come down by half after June uh, of this year. Uh, then uh, by next year, when the final payout happens for one, that will be the, uh, that will go off. Which is uh, running at around 11 crores now per quarter, it will come down. Okay, sure. Yeah. And just one last question on the BFSI side. You know, BFSI revenue was $21 million uh, two quarters back. Uh, sorry, 20, uh, $17 million. Uh, that has come down to $11, $12 million now. Uh, so, how should one treat this? I mean, why is that happening? Because the deal deferment which has happened on the healthcare side, uh, how has the BFSI got impacted? Uh, specifically, I think mean, two quarters back, we were having $17 million as revenue, and now around $11.5 million. Yeah, um, uh, maybe I may take that question. So that's the uh, the seasonality part for corn that we talked about. So I think in uh, Jan, March quarter, it's a seasonally soft quarter for the banking client, uh, the large banking client for corn. I think that number will pick back up in uh, in the April June quarter, um, quite quite substantially and fully by uh, July quarter. It's a it's a short term blip that we anticipated and we had uh, we had uh, communicated that in our. Uh, October uh, call as well that we are expecting a seasonality that will happen every year. The Jan March quarter will be soft for this uh, banking business. Okay, sure. So the entire two and a half million dollars is driven by seasonality. It's a seasonality factor. Yeah, it will get it will get significantly get recovered in this quarter, and and the last part will get recovered fully by uh, Q2. Okay, sure. That's it from my Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Tushar. From Incred Capital, please go ahead. Hello, uh, am I audible? Uh, you're not very clear, Tushar. Can you use your handset mode, please? Uh, am I audible now? Uh, yes, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead, Tushar. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tushar. You're not clear. You're sounding muffled. It has been postponed due to the transformation. So, any outlook on the wager for uh, FI25? So wage hike, yeah. We are uh, implementing a new performance management system as we mentioned uh, last quarter. Uh, the process is on and this will be completed by Q2 of this year. Uh, we will be uh, deciding upon the, the increment cycle by then. We will be able to announce by the end of quarter one uh, what is the quantum and when we are going to do that. But the process is on already and this will be uh, the performance management system will be completed by Q2 of this year. Uh, and so my next question is related to gross uh, profitability in the domestic business. So in this quarter, we have seen uh, I mean, growth moderation on the YOI basis. So going there, we expect, do we expect 10 to 15 percent growth could be uh, sustainable? You are talking about uh, domestic business. Domestic business, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. This will be uh, definitely, as I'm, uh, uh, we mentioned last quarter also, the impact and turnover growth is mainly because of IT companies, because IT industry constitutes about 40 percentage of the domestic business uh, turnover. Uh, that was the impact. Our year-on-year year, FY23 to FY24 growth has been solid, but uh, the quarter four there has been a uh, small blip in that. Uh, this will, but our commitment of uh, yearly year-on-year uh, year, uh, growth on GC of 15 percent we are maintaining. That's it from my side. Best wishes for Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. The next question is from the line of Vipul Kumar Anup Chand Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, can you uh, give the uh, onshore uh, offside, uh, onshore offshore mix for the quarter and what was the same for the third quarter? Uh, okay. On the remaining terms, we have not yet uh, disclosed that uh, in the presentation. Uh, we, can, we have decided to hold that uh, because there is a, we are in a transition phase at present. Uh, hence, not able to share the same with you. I think previously you used to share this uh, detail in your presentation. I have to share earlier, but uh, from Q, Q2 of this year, we have not been sharing that. So you are not calling out the margin impact. You are not calling out uh, for the uh, uh, this mix. Then uh, how do investors come to the conclusion uh, what impact this delay in the deal had, and what will what its impact on profitability will be in the coming quarters? I think you should share it, sir. So we are taking your input. We will. Uh, uh, we will uh, uh, review it uh, internally and then come back to you on that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. Participants are requested to press star and 1 to ask a question. We'll take a question from the line of Devang Bhatt from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, just one thing, if in this quarter, if we exclude Citadel and Quant seasonality, what could be our growth? Uh, second is that, uh, you know, you highlighted that uh, in FI25, Quant will uh, grow by 65%. That's why you had taken that one-time hit. So, are we still on that track that, you know, we grow by 65% YOY in FI25 as well? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, man. We have, uh, whatever we have taken it in the December, we continue to hold that growth and quant. We will, if there is a change in that, we will come back and update on that. Uh, at present, we see that this year they will catch up for the growth, uh, whatever we estimated in December. Uh, there can be a small... Uh, changes in the plus or minus percentage, but we expect that uh, directionally that number we expect even today. The the first question uh, on the on the uh, quant and the on the uh, our uh, base business, as we mentioned earlier, we have integrated the company very very strongly. Uh, so it is very difficult for us to uh, no split it because the legal entity is uh, quant, but there are lot of uh, cross selling or uh, no lot of. Uh, uh, Cross business has been there in between these two organizations, so difficult to uh, uh, split and give it give it to you on that basis. Okay, sir. And one more thing, sir. Uh, we said that we were uh, quant was going to grow 64 percent this year. So now, considering this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, quant seasonality, now uh, are we are we uh, have we still grown at 64 percent, or there has been miss all over there? You are talking about FI24 or 25? FI24. FI24, yes, they have grown. They have not, there is no change. As I mentioned to you, whatever was assumption, the, actually the assumption was for CY23 because uh, their, their function was on CY basis. We have made an estimate for CY23, uh, but this FI24 also remains the same. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for taking my question. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Harsh Chaurasia from Valen Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah you are audible. Uh, so, uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. So, I have one question. Uh, the number of million dollar customers category, the data you did. So, from last quarter, uh, there has been a significant decline in one to three million dollar category, and the same for five plus million dollar uh, class. Uh, like on that. Yeah, 
actually that we are uh, as uh, Samir was mentioning our focus has been on the large reel 5 plus million dollars have been uh, have been steadily our pipeline as well as the order book has been steadily growing there that's one of the positive news in this uh, man the other area is there are plenty of opportunity in the new technology area uh, they may start for an of uh, the initial uh, order values which is slightly less than 1 million dollars may come in because of the new technology areas both in AI as well as in Microsoft Fabric. We expect these deals to convert into uh, fire, no, large deals in the coming year, coming quarter. But the, order, but the customer addition momentum has been very, very strong. 13 customers in Q3 but 18 in Q4. Very, very strong customer addition. Okay. Uh, understood. So just one more question from Microsoft Fabric side. So can you uh, explain a bit more uh, from a layman perspective, like how Gen AI can uh, complement Microsoft Fabric or how Microsoft can go like vice versa? Like what would be the uh, uh, relation? Yeah, let me, let me try uh, uh, for, for you. Uh, so essentially, the Gen AI is really dependent upon using the data in a right and meaningful way. Um, uh, for you to de deduce any uh, insights that are meaningful for the business, uh, that's the way it will work. So as an example, the Gen AI uh, win that we announced today for a clinical trial company, they're using the data to determine um, what kind of uh, uh, patients will get a drug tested on. And they want to have ethnic diversity and uh, regional diversity for those patients. Now the data comes uh, and has to be used so that they can make some intelligent decisions and predict who they want to have on a drug, drug trial basis. Now the data per se resides in multiple systems for uh, for their organization, their partner organization. That's where really Fabric comes in because it has the ability to pull in data from multiple sources. It's a SaaS-based platform, uh, and it can provide and host the host the data in a uh, and provide the data to the AI engine. So think of it like a two-tier thing: AI becomes the front end, and uh, Fabric becomes the infrastructure which supports the front end. So okay. is it like more of a data lake where all the data is structured in a structure like it is in a structuralized format? Yeah, you, you can you can take that as a working model. Yes. Just uh, just one more question from a data point regarding. I think I missed your opening statement. The there was a mentioning like we will do 20% of the revenue in Gen AI or like something of that sort. Yeah, that's right. We said in three years we expect our, our revenue to be from uh, from Gen AI and supported infrastructure in about uh, three years from now, yes. Okay. So those are the bets we are making. If you think about the two bets that we made in the last year, one is in AI and the second is in fabric, and those businesses are nicely scaling for us, so we think that could be a significant part of a business in three years, yes. Got it. Uh, thank you, sir. Best of luck for FA25. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Proline Nandu from Edelweiss. Alternate Public Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, Samir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you your comments on uh, uh, Q1 and Q2 being weaker than, uh, you know, I mean, maybe flattish or some growth. Is this largely because of the deal uh, that has been delayed or are there any other uh, deals also which we are expecting to be delayed? So, uh, I mean, just want to understand whether, uh, you know, this delay uh, of this deal has given us an opportunity to reassess whether this thing can happen in some of the other deals as well, which we're expecting to start ramping up in Q1 and Q2. I think it's a latter. Uh, you, you spot on. It's a latter. Because we saw a deal which was pretty much uh, done, getting delayed, we are taking uh, an approach to just reassess all other deals to, to make sure that uh, we factor that in. And we think it's more prudent at this time of uh, this time, given all the decisions that we've been seeing, to just calibrate ourselves to that level of uh, uh, investment cycle. Uh, in Q4, what happened to us was definitely a blip. That's why I keep saying it was a blip and we're confident of the future. But we just want to calibrate ourselves for the next two quarters so that our investments run in line with the large deal expectations that we have. So it's a very deliberate uh, strategy we're taking to make sure that we um, uh, we invest the dollars wisely. Uh, and uh, as we close the deals, that's when we start to put these investments back on. So first of, first order of uh, task for us is to redeploy the people that we hired for this large deal. Of course, close the large deal in itself, and as more da large deals close, uh, we continue to put the momentum back uh, in the business that we got a little bit sidetracked uh, last quarter. Okay, so so Sami, so to understand it, I mean, it's largely uh, one, one, one deal which is you know, impacting our 
uh, you know, outlook on Q1 and Q2, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, we're just thinking about calibrated approach, yes. And we're seeing, in general, there has been a delay, like I said in my comments as well, deals which are taking okay. three to six months is now taking nine months to maybe sometimes a year. We're just taking a more calibrated approach given what has happened on this one single day. So, 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 that, so that, that was my second question, right? If I look at your GTN mix, right? I mean, emerging tech, dynamic data, these are all, uh, you know, in a way, uh, part of these, Spends by clients are in a way non-discretionary, right? I mean, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the way of doing business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, why uh, are we facing uh, such kind of a challenge? Where you know, in terms of modernization, we have a play there as well. So, what is it that is happening in the kind of GTNs that we operate in, which you know, uh, which is leading to delays from the client and in terms of closing the deal? I think it's two things. One, uh, like in the example we just talked about, the last deal, uh, it was an organization change that the customer went in. And as you know, when a new leader comes, they take, take, take their time to reassess the priorities and investment cycle. So that's what actually happened in that case. And another example, the, the customer had uh, a corporate event uh, on their own side. So they just put pause on all, all programs because they wanted to get their quarter in. So it's multiple shades. Candidly, it's not one. And it's a culmination of these two things that happened in the last quarter. We said, okay, let's just take a more calibrated approach on these deals and the timing of closure. And like I said sure. at the beginning, uh, you know, the cycles have changed. I would say the last three months, the deals that were closing between three to six months are now closing between six to nine months or somewhere in the zone. Understood. So things have worsened, you know, from our uh, go-to-market kind of a thing in the last three months. Am I correct? From a decisioning cycle perspective, yes. Sure, sure. And lastly, you know, you have this aspiration of 20% revenue uh, coming from AI in the next three years. Um, maybe can you uh, give us some range? Uh, what percentage of our deal pipeline uh, is related to Gen AI? Yeah, I, I think I, I gave that number. Let me look at the notes. You, you mentioned yeah. 65 million, right? I mean, total uh, AI pipeline. And think out think of that... Think of it like a 5% of our pipeline somewhere in the zone... Um, you know, okay. let's think about it right now. Sure. And when you mentioned uh, 65 million uh, of uh, Gen AI pipeline and 45 million of fabric, that Gen AI, uh, I mean, fabric forms part of Gen AI. Am I correct? No, they are, they are, they are independent. So the combined okay. is about 10% okay. of a total pipeline. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Hamid, thanks a lot and all the best. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take our next question from the line of Krupa Desai from Electrum Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. My question was on the goal of uh, achieving $1.5 billion by 2026. So do we still stick on that goal? Because seeing the weakness in the near term, uh, will, we, will we be able to achieve this target? Yeah, it's a great question. I think something that we keep thinking about. I think, yes, so in the long term, we think... We're still uh, uh, rooting for that goal and gunning for that goal. There might be a quarter or two delay, uh, put, you know, is our, is our current calibration, uh, but we're still uh, running for that goal. As you know, it was an aspirational goal that we announced ourselves for two years back, uh, and I think we still want to run for that goal. Like I said, might be a couple of quarters calibration that we might have to do, but we'll do that calibration later in the year uh, once we have more firmer view of the year itself. So will it be able, will we be able to achieve it by FY27? Like I said, we, we are still running for FY26. There might be a couple of quarters delay at this point in time of the thinking. So yes, to answer your question, 27 should be absolutely doable, uh, but there might be somewhere in that zone of one or two, one or two quarters delay is what we're expecting right now. Mm -hmm. so that would be, could be inorganic and organic because organic growth of this rate could be a challenge in the current environment. So how much of that you are uh, targeting to be inorganic? We did not we did not uh, plan for inorganic when we had put it out. Like we always said that we'll do inorganic for the right reasons. Uh, right now, for at least for this uh, fiscal year, we're not planning any uh, M&A activity. Uh, at least for this calendar year, we will look at uh, looking looking at some M&A activity if that uh, sometime next year. And that too is dependent largely on the right property. I've always said this, that we will do acquisition for the right reason, not for the number of reasons. So, sir, like looking at the industry, this could be like single digits or lower single digits. Uh, this is targeting about 23-24% kind of growth. So, what could drive that kind of growth for Sonata? 
I think our investment that we have talked about uh, and the large deal momentum that we have seen, while there is a delay, the deals have not evaporated. Uh, if you look at even now, more than 50% of our pipeline is large deal centric. And that is what has catapulted us uh, last year also. If you look at last year, uh, including Quant, we delivered about 34, 35% YNY growth. Um, so we have done this in the last fiscal year. We believe uh, through a combination of large deals, and uh, maybe some acquisition, if, if makes, it makes sense for us in the course of the next two years, we, we will we still want to run for that uh, FI26 uh, end run rate goal with plus or minus two quarters uh, variance. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Siddhant Punjabi from way to wealth Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. So, so I just have one last uh, bookkeeping question. Uh, if I see our uh, consolidated results, uh, would it be fair to say that uh, the other expenses, you know, they've actually jumped significantly in this quarter? If I look at it on a sequential basis, mm -hmm. uh, it's gone up to almost 230 crores from 186. So would, would it be fair to say that a large part of it has come from, you know, uh, the deal that did not go through? Um, and, you know, the, uh, the expenses on that, or is there something else that's being baked in over here? Because I see employee cost uh, has actually reduced on a sequential basis, it's gone to 337 to about 330 crores. So just wanted to try and get an, an understanding over here. Yeah, as, as we mentioned uh, earlier, the utilization has gone up, so our total headcount has come down and offshore has come down. Whereas the on-site impact has gone up, so we have been calibrating to balance between these two. The other expenses is actually, uh, we constitute the various elements into it, on uh, uh, including the, the deal cost as well as the other cost uh, will be there. There are some reclassification accounting requirements and all these things are there. Uh, we will give you the, if you need the further information, we will give you the, the off, offline because it's a little uh, lengthy. Uh, Link here, breakup. I have to share the same. Okay, yeah, it'd be really grateful because that's that's a really big jump that you know we're seeing on a quarter on quarter basis. So, uh, yeah, a uh, little explanation on this would be really, uh, really yeah, great. The financial year end, so you have to compare that with financial year of last year, but I can share the details with you offline. That would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Deepesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Thanks for the follow-up opportunity. A couple of questions. Just on the healthcare deal, whether we have booked any TCV in the prior quarter from that deal, and is it existing or new client where we are, let's say, seeing some delay? Second question is about the top 10 and top 20 client, if I look uh Showing sizable weakness, not for this quarter, even last quarter it was weak. So it can give some sense how one should look at it because our preference was always to mine, uh, see progress on client mining, which is not visible at least in top 10, top 20 for a couple of quarters. So if you can give some sense. Thank you. Yeah, to, to your first question, uh, I'll take the second, second, second question. Uh, it's an existing client um, and the deal was not booked. Uh, we were planning to book the deal in January, and it got uh, deferred uh, uh, to beyond Q4 now. So it's, uh, it was not in the deal that we, one of the deals that we announced or anything. We're still in a pursuit stage, and it's an existing client. Uh, to your second question, Jagan, you want to take that? Yeah. The, uh, the top 10 and top 20 were a little moderated during the last two quarters because of our top customer uh, dipping. So, but uh, we are, they are picking it, uh, picking up, and uh, we are expecting this to... Uh, they'll at least the top 10 customers will grow faster in the coming days. Uh, but the possibility also that we are expanding with the number of new customers opportunities coming in, this look, uh, this is like a, a aberration for the time being for one or two quarters because of a differential growth in few customers, in the top customers, which we expected to settle back to the earlier list. So it is only one client related issue. Rest of the 19 no, no, clients no, no, we have. Customers, seen. right? We had the second. Uh, we have a uh, travel customer in Europe. Plus, uh, there are three or four customers in the top uh, 10 who have a little moderation there. Uh, that was actually reflecting in the top 10 and the top 20 customer. 
this is uh, we are expecting the top customer to grow so automatically things are going to change in the coming quarters understood thank you thank you we'll take a next question from the line of mayank babla from inam amc please go ahead yeah hi thank you for taking my question again uh so i just wanted to understand from you that you know given the current order book that we have and that uh, you know quant uh, the expectation largely remains unchanged and you know the healthy pipeline that we have uh, in your experience and you know as per anecdotal evidence uh, what sort of uh, means can we achieve you know at least reach double digit in fy25 or you don't have that sort of visibility yet like i said earlier we expect to be higher than industry exactly whether it should be uh, high single digit or low double digit or mid team growth we don't know that right now honestly we will give you a, a read out as, as soon as we have the calibration and the reason lies is not because we are not confident of the order book or pipeline we have sufficient pipeline with sufficient order book uh, but uh, things are changing at this point in time quite significantly every quarter just want to give ourselves another quarter or two uh, before we can give you some some firm answers but we are sure that we will grow more than the industry that that much confidence we can be with it so the question uh, here is uh, uh, mayanka the opportunity no issues at all plenty of opportunity right. in the market even today we will say our pipeline is remains to be very strong the closure of the deals are uncertainty is in closed of the deal is actually the the point to be addressed so we hope that in a quarter or two we will get more clarity and we will be able to do the best Fair enough. And so my last question is around the uh, pipeline. Typically, what percentage of the pipeline gets converted into order book? I think our win ratios are about 35-40 percent. So that is probably the way to think about it uh, from a TCD closure perspective. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, best of luck for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Mihir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for giving the follow. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand on the margin side. I mean, uh, given the fact that we are expecting flattish growth uh, going ahead for the next two quarters, now how should one see margins? I mean, uh, uh, I understand that that will be they will also be related to the deployment of the people uh, that we had gone uh, onshore for this particular deal. Uh, but how should one see margins? I mean, should see one see margins recovering over a period of two quarters, or immediately recovering back in the uh, next quarter itself? Yeah, uh, this is a little, uh, you know, related to revenue as well as the other factors are there to uh, factor in. Uh, one is the uh, how fast the revenue bounce back recovery happens. It also depends on the margins what we can do uh, and how we are able to redeploy the uh, resources taken for the last bit. that also very very important for us to, uh, in the margin journey as we mentioned earlier we are implementing our performance management system and uh, we will be able to take a call on end of q1 beginning of q2 about the salary increase also uh, so uh, we have to factor that also in the coming quarter so at least in couple of quarters the margin may remain in the similar level and uh, the improvement we can see probably in the second half of the year Uh, towards the uh, Q3 and Q4, uh, probably we can expect some improvement. In this. Sure. Uh, just uh, one question on the emerging uh, emerging vertical side. I mean, emerging vertical this quarter is like three and a half million dollars versus six point seven million dollars last quarter. Uh, so, what led to the decline for this vertical? Depends on the project closure and all. This is like a, a, a nothing to specifically read about it because these are all other uh, notes. Uh, other verticals other in you know emerging technologies and other projects are there this uh, relatively always will be very time specific or a site specific of that most of the large deals are in the four major verticals for us so those four verticals are really doing uh, you know you can see the see our focus is reflecting in their size emerging is uh, automatically will uh, will will moderate over a period of time sure sure yeah uh, best of luck for the next year thank you Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Harsh Chaurasia from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yes, yes. Go ahead. 
so one question from a uh, our uh, like capability side uh, we in microsoft dynamic services we have seen uh, on yy basis a double digit decline but at the same time if i compare to a like a globally microsoft they have posted a, d- a double digit growth rate on a yy basis so can you help me explain this divergence and my follow up for this question would be like are we like would it be fair to assume like we are losing uh, market share in microsoft dynamics versus implementation no 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 not exactly because uh, there will be a lag between what microsoft does and what we do because of the uh, it's an implementation that it is a services and they are the license uh, provider and there is always a gap happens on this yeah the dynamics is majorly because of the uh, project specifically project large project getting closed over the period of time and uh, other projects start and then uh, ramp up in the course of the year uh during the during the year uh, there was uh, there were a little bit of uh, the some of the deals have are pending to be closed uh, still pen, are there uh, delay in closure of the deal otherwise we expect up this may be a couple of quarter phenomena and after that uh, probably we'll pick it up on that uh just uh, on a follow up uh, like uh, what would be the lag period between the microsoft dynamics and the the number we are posting it will be like couple of quarters here yeah. at least a couple of quarters we can expect on this uh, in the earlier period on uh, at least one year back the same question was asked that time it was like three to four quarters of land was there but overall opportunity in dynamics is still there and then the growth uh, possibilities are there this uh, one or two quarters later the project will pick up and we expect that uh, the, the growth trend will follow up in this uh, in couple of quarters later okay thank you sir thank you as there are no further questions i now hand the conference over to management for closing comments over to you yeah thank you operator so th- we thank you all of you to join us today um, like uh, we always say this, we thank our global team members to work uh, uh, extremely hard to keep sonata on a growth trajectory uh, we are extremely proud of the overall fi24 of course we had a blip in last quarter but we are overall proud of the fi24 performance it was an extraordinary year in many ways a defining year but based on the outcomes that we achieved uh, we want to continue the trend i sincerely thanks to all of you for uh, giving us your time and, and your support thank you once again and we'll speak to you in a quarter's time thank you thank you thank you on behalf of sonata software limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines